<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial showing you how you can install custom firmware to any PSP except for the street model. So this tutorial works for the 1000 model, as you can see right here a 2000 model, a 3000 model, or a PSP Go. If you have the other PSP that is the E1000, otherwise known as the Street, unfortunately, this is not going to work for you, so you cannot follow along with this tutorial. But I would recommend picking up another model of the PSP that is exploitable because they are pretty easy to come by and they're quite affordable, and any system can do this that is within those models. It doesn't matter with your firmware, it doesn't matter with the motherboard variant, as long as it is not a E1000, otherwise known as a street model. Now for this tutorial, you're going to need a few things. Of course, have your PSP fully charged and as an added bonus, also plug it in while it is charging as well too, uh, just in case you lose power or anything else. Second, make sure you have a Memory Stick Pro Duo or some kind of storage for your PSP. Now, if you have a PSP Go, you can use the internal storage, but if you have a one, two, or 3000 model, you can use a Memory Stick Pro Duo or you can even use some of those adapters that might be a micro SD card to Memory Stick Pro Duo adapter. That is what I'm using. Finally, you're also going to need to download the archive file that has all the software we're going to be using that can be found down below in the description and I'm going to show you the process of how to do everything on that. Now, first off, I would recommend make sure you back up any files you care about off your storage. I do not care about any of the files on here. I actually have nothing. So what I'm going to be doing is going over to system settings. I'd recommend going over and formatting your SD card or your memory stick right here. So I'm just gonna say yes to this, yes again, let it format, and that's done. Now at this point, all you need to do is take out your card, your memory stick, uh, pop it into your computer, or just hook up your PSP via USB, and we can start transferring all the files that we need. Once you hook up your storage to your computer, uh, what you wanna do, of course, after you download the archive file is just right click and extract everything right here, and I'll go over what all these files are. So first of all, for the PSP folder, I've set this up so inside of here, it has everything that we need for Infinity Custom Firmware, which is what we're going to be doing. You're gonna have your maker, flasher, and your configuration. For this, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is copy this PSP file, paste it to the root of the SD card or whatever card you're using, and that's it. For the OFW right here, double click on this, and here you can pick what you need. Now, if you have a one, two, or 3000 model, pick this. If you have a PSP Go, pick this. It should be extremely obvious what you have to differentiate between the two. Uh, but what we're gonna do is go into here, there's gonna be two files, 631.pbp and 661.pbp. If you have a PSP Go, these are going to also be called 631Go and 661Go, but you can just rename them to 631 and 661 after you copy them over to your card. All you need to do for these two is grab both of these files, copy them, go over to PSP, Game, Maker, and paste these inside of Maker. Now, if you are on a lower firmware, for example, my PSP is on firmware 6.2, what you need to do is go back up one to game and inside of here, create a new folder and call it update. It needs to be all one word. There you go. Now go inside of here, grab the 661.pbp, copy and paste it for your respective system. Once this is copied over, you need to rename this in all caps, eBoot. Just like that, eBoot.pbp. Now go back to the root of your PSP and go back over to the root of everything here. Finally, we can now pick a custom firmware. So you need to go into CFW and you can pick what you want if you want LME or Pro. Now, at the end of the day, both of these are essentially going to be doing the same thing. This is going to be the custom firmware that we're going to put on the PSP afterwards, after all this is done. Uh, for my choice, I'm going to pick LME, but the installation for both is essentially the same. For either one of those, if you go with Pro or if you go with LME, you just want to go in here, grab all of these, right click, copy, and paste them to the root of your card. And now that is done. On here, we have our update file, we have our infinity files, and we also have the custom firmware. So go ahead, eject this safely, and then go over to your PSP and pop this in. Now that you're back over at your PSP, go down to the memory stick, 
enter it, and I need to update my PSP. So you should find all the other Infinity things here, such as Infinity Bootloader Configuration, Infinity Firmware Flasher, Infinity Firmware Builder, and you're also going to find your installers for either Pro or LME. But since I need to update my system, go ahead and do this system update. Go ahead and press start right here, scroll over, say you accept and now continue this is now going to flash over your system from whatever firmware it was to firmware 6.61 now if you are already updated you don't need to do this step i am doing this because i need to get up to date once this is completed go ahead and exit and wait for your system to restart at this point if you want to you can go down to your memory stick grab your update file and just delete it off of here because we're not going to need it again At this point, go down to your custom firmware and look for the installer and launcher files. Go ahead and select this. Once this comes up, you can just press X to install modules and it should restart once it's done. At this point, we have technically installed and exploited our PSP, but it is nowhere near a permanent custom firmware, so we would have to relaunch this on boot every time. In order to fix this, first off, we need to go down to the LME launcher or Pro Launcher, launch this, and wait a few seconds for it to reboot. Once you go back over to your XMB, go to the memory stick, and now go down to Infinity Firmware Builder. This is what we're going to need. When it gives us these options, you want to select Build Hybrid Firmware, and what it's now going to do is it is going to take the 6.31 and 6.61 files, essentially dump them, rebuild them into a custom firmware that we can use, and then we will flash that over to our system. Once this is done, you can exit out of this. Once that is done, get your storage back over to your PC because we need to move one file over. Once you have your storage device hooked back up, go over to PSP, game, go over to the maker folder, and you're going to need to find this file right here that is called data.mfc. You need to copy this out, go back up one folder, go to the flasher folder, and paste it in here. So the only two files you should have are eboots.pbp and data.mfc. This data.mfc is the file that we just spent the last five or 10 minutes creating. This is the firmware that we're going to flash over. With that done, eject this and go back over to your PSP. If you had to restart your PSP again, since this is a temporary custom firmware, you're going to need to go over to your memory stick, find your launcher, and then load up the launcher for your custom firmware. Wait for your system to reboot. Once your XMB loads back up, go in here, and go down to the 6.61 Infinity Firmware Flasher and load this up. There's only one option here, so go ahead and press start. Agree to the terms and wait for it to flash. It's now going to take that custom firmware that we just built out and it's going to flash it to your system. Once that's done, go ahead and reboot your system. If you get a blue screen of death, this is normal. Just go ahead and press the extra circle button, whatever it's going to ask for, and wait for your system to restart. This time around, we should have a successfully working system. Now it is going to nuke all of our settings, so just go ahead and make sure you can set it up as a new system successfully. Once it is set up again, if you go over to your settings, system settings, system information, it's going to say version 6.61 infinity. That is exactly what we're looking for. Unfortunately though, this is still not a full custom firmware. You see, we have patched the system itself, but now we're missing the custom firmware component. So we are going to reinstall that. Just like before, go into your memory stick, go down to LME installer or the pro installer, whatever you're using, and open this up. Go ahead, continue with the install. And once it's done, wait for your system to reboot. So now we have 6.61 Infinity installed. We have our custom firmware installed, but we need to launch it. So go in here, go all the way down to your launcher and boot this up. Now, finally, with all that done, this should be the last step. We are going to configure our Infinity firmware to have this be permanent. So you need to go back into your memory stick and finally use the boat and finally use the bootloader configuration. 
open this up. Once it says welcome to Infinity, scroll over to the left and you can pick your installed module. You can either pick Pro CFW or ME CFW. I know we're using LME, but trust me, if you're using LME, just pick ME CFW. Press the X button on whatever custom firmware you're using. So since we're using LME, I'm going to pick the ME custom firmware. It's going to annotate that that is the firmware that you have selected. Now you can go back over to the right, double check and verify that it is selected. Now you can just exit out of this app like any other game. To test that this is working, I recommend pressing the select button, go all the way down over to shut down, and press X. Now to test to make sure that this is all working, turn on your PSP. It should boot into custom firmware immediately. Once your PSP boots up, press the select button, and if this VSH menu comes up, congratulations, you now have Infinity successfully installed with a cold booting custom firmware. It can be either LME or Pro, depending on what you are using. One final thing I would recommend before you copy over any of your data or anything else is I would recommend formatting your memory stick. For that, you can go all the way over to System Settings, Format Memory Stick, and say yes to both these prompts and make sure it formats. That way it's going to get rid of any of those files that we have and it's going to create any custom firmware specific folders. With that done, go ahead and take your storage out, hook it up to your computer or hook up your PSP to your computer and I'll show you how you can load up games and homebrew. Now there's going to be two types of files you will deal with when dealing with PSP games or homebrew. Uh, if it is homebrew or if it is a PS1 game for PSP, which is the example I used right here, it's going to come in a PBP file. For any actual PSP game, it's going to come in a ISO file. So for an ISO file, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is right click, copy, go over to where your storage is, and on the root, there should be a ISO folder. Go in here and paste it. There's also a video folder right here. If you double click this, uh, this is specifically for PSP movies. So back in the day, they made a lot of movies on UMD discs. If for some ungodly reason you want to watch one, you have to copy it into the video folder in the ISO folder. For any type of homebrew or any PS1 conversions, you need to go over to PSP, go into the game folder, and simply copy and paste the folder into that game folder. So now that you have your homebrew or your games added, uh, what you need to do is go down over to your memory stick under game, enter this, and as you can see, these are our games. That is my Liberty City Stories that I copied over, so the ISO file, and this right here is the PS1 conversion that I ended up grabbing. So that's it. To open any of these, all you need to do is just launch it like any other homebrew like the stuff we've been doing prior, and that's about it. As for anything else I can recommend, I would actually recommend just uh, when you're over at your XMB, press the select button and playing around with the VSH menu a little bit. As you can see here, you can change the clock speed of everything in your XMB to improve loading if you want to. Uh, you can improve the clock speed of your games as well too. That could affect games depending on how they are, but just to let you know you can do that. Now here's one thing where it says USB device, it is set to memory stick by default. If you ever want to rip over any UMD games, what you can actually do is change this over to UMD disk, go to exit or select this, and then pop in your UMD disk, go over to USB connection, and whenever this loads up, you can just hook up a USB, and when you hook that up to your computer, it will actually show your game in ISO format. So you can rip the ISO directly from your disk right there if you ever want to back up your collection like that. I would recommend doing that if you ever want to try it out. Finally, there's also a recovery menu, which I'll go ahead and enter right here. What you can do right here is go into your configuration, and you can change your boot settings. For example, skip Sony logo, skip game boot, uh, really do whatever you want to on here. Now, I would encourage you all to definitely check this out and play around with it, but one thing I definitely need to do is in registry hacks, right here there is button assign. I'm going to change this so X is now my main button. If you've noticed me messing up with circle and X throughout this tutorial, it is because this PSP is actually a Japanese PSP, so the default button is circle, but a lot of this homebrew requires X to be the default button. So once you're done messing around with whatever you want to, you can go back, you can exit out of here, and that's it. There's only two other pieces of advice I would recommend to you all. One, do not play around with Flash Zero. That is your actual system flash. 
don't play around with it, don't touch it. Second, have fun. This is a PSP, this is a great game system, it has a pretty awesome library, get to play in it now with custom firmware. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off, thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you hated it, a dislike is fine as well too. CFW. I know we're using LME, but trust me, if you're using LME, just pick ME CFW. Press the X button. <laughs> Lily Crate! Great! Great!